and welcome here to the first bit of Kerbal Space Program I've done for a while. Here's my new ship. Let's get it in the air, shall we? And away it goes. Now, I know, I haven't done any Kerbal Space Program in a long while. I started a series. The series, well, it was fun for me. I don't know how it was for you guys. And then all my mods crashed, and I got really, really depressed, and I didn't go back to it for a little while, so sorry about that. Um, hopefully I'll pick it up again, because I certainly have enjoyed doing this bit. Um, so, here's my new ship. Let's get it into space a little bit, and then we'll have a little chat about what we're here doing, why we're doing it, and hopefully why it'll be fun. So I'll see all you guys in a little bit. Yeah, that's a bit quieter. Now... Now that I can hear myself think, what are we doing here? Well, Kerbal is at war, and has been for quite some time. There's been war between the continents, there's been war between the corporations, and now the Northern Coalition, who were the policemen in the last war, have decided that they've had enough. They've decided to take over the world, take over space, and limit everyone's freedom. Well, we... We here at the Super Happy Reliable Corporation will not allow that. We at Shark, makers of such wonderful things as munitions, space fuel and snacks, especially snacks, have decided that this is not acceptable and this is our first commercial launch into space to deal with the threat of the Northern Coalition. So what do we have here? Well, I'll go through the ship away a little bit. but. What we basically have here is a number of different ships all being launched together. Um, the reason for that being the rules allow only one launch per turn or the movement of two ships. If you haven't seen the introduction to this, which hopefully should have been posted on my site for a week or two um, by now, uh, please go and watch it at this point. In fact, to be totally honest with you, it's not going to make any sense to you whatsoever if you don't go and watch it by now. Um, so, pause the video, go and have a watch, come back when you're done. We'll wait. We're still waiting. Okay, right, they're gone. Let's carry on. Um, so, this ship here is designed to do two things. First of all, it's designed to put a military and scientific pr presence around the planet of Duna. And the other thing it wants to do is, if as you saw in the last episode, because I'm sure you went and watched it by now, um, we're here to uh, go and capture the pilot who was stranded in the last episode. So uh, that's our two plans. Um, while we're waiting to get into orbit, why don't we hop back to the VAB and I will give you a breakdown of this vessel. Well, here we have the Juna Visitor in all her glory. Let's go through the various bits and pieces, shall we? Okay, going down to the bottom, we have the launch section. In there we have... Let's get rid of these launch clamps. All right, uh, we have some booster rockets. Standard fare. And that leads us down to an asparagus stage. Oh, let's get rid of these ones as well. Bye-bye. There we go. So this leads us to an a, a standard asparagus stage. So we've got um, six rockets around the uh, the central one. They they come off in pairs, and they feed into the central one, which will give us the final bit of the the launch stage there, which uh, actually extends up into the rocket. So that's the last of the launch stage. That's actually not enough fuel for us to circularize the orbit. So the final bit will be happening with the uh, the interstellar stage itself which is the reason why it's got these extra drop pods for just a little bit of extra fuel to get the circularization going we're aiming to do the circularization at 500 uh, kilometers so there's a fair bit there all right moving on quickly we have the grabber unit here which is going to go and collect our friend um who's in the uh, the the cockpit that's stranded around uh minmus so we have here, we have a, a little grabber unit, a couple of cockpits, one for the pilot and one for the passenger to come back in, some fairly standard uh, RCS fuel and thrusters, uh, a fuel unit with a few bits and pieces on it, nothing special, and uh, finally 
Um, a nuclear engine for thrust. That's going to give us plenty of thrust to go to Minimus, come back and uh, capture our friends. So that just leaves us with the bit that's going to Juna, which is this. Now there's several sh ships here, so let's deal with these in turn. The first set here is these... Um, communication satellite blocks. Now there's four communication satellites here. There's two of these units, so that's eight communication satellites in total. They're very simple. They Each one has an antenna. It has um, a nuclear engine and a little command pod. So there's, there's four of those per unit and two units, so that's plenty of communication satellites to go out in Juno. And the other thing we have here is these little drone drone fighters, which are a little bit more complex, but not that much. Each one of them has three sets of 10 missiles. So that's 30 missiles in total, 10 shots. They're stored on the front. Then we have some very simple stuff. There's a, let's put that back. Right, a little bit of RCS for maneuvering, docking, things like that. A couple of communication units so it doesn't get out of, uh, out of control of the controlling body some generation uh, little engine and the rest of it is fairly standard we've got a probe core we've got RCS above it uh, uh, sorry SAS above it there's the probe core a little bit of mech jeb and the rest of it is just fuel so that's them so if we get rid of these We are left with the interstellar body itself. When it stops thinking about it. Oh. That's why. Let's get rid of that. Off you go. Okay, so the interstellar body is basically four of these sections here. Now, each one of them has three nuclear engines around some fuel SAS, a nose cone for a little bit of a uh, style and um, grace uh, an SAS unit and a lot of fuel okay so moving on from those we have an orbital main satellite body which is actually I'm, I'm kind of planning for this to be a return unit as well so um, eventually this lander will be coming back up to the surface. Uh, the opportunity is there to dock with this and return back to Kerbin. Um, this is very simple. Uh, it's got a little poodle engine at the bottom. Get rid of those. Some um, RCS thrusters. Some fuel. And above that we have here we have sets of um, what are those? They are antenna some uh, a mixture here of RCS probe core and battery around a, a little bit more RCS a docking port and then that leaves us with the lander unit the lander unit has some return thrusters uh, those are extra drop tanks we'll get rid of those um, these are the return thrusters that are designed to take it in orbit. We're left with the the, uh, the lander itself, and it's got four legs, docking port for docking again, some battery power, fuel uh, power generation there, and then we're basically left with um, habitation for five Kerbals one in the cockpit, four in there. I'm only going to send up two for this mission, so they've got plenty of space and loads of snacks. And that's the Juno Visitor. Well, here we are. The uh, fuel in the main burner is about to run out. In fact, there it goes. And there's the separation. And you that's loud. Switching over to the, uh, the interstellar drive that's going to be using those... Uh, drop tanks we showed you in the VAB to push us up to the final orbit. We're almost in orbit now but we want to get up to uh, a, a nice stable 500 kilometer orbit and then we will separate off the uh, the rescue craft from the, the interstellar body and those two can go their separate way. Burfield off to uh, rescue the person that got uh, shot down in the last episode 
Kerbis and Urquhart, well, they're off to do now. I'll see you then. Right, now we're almost in our circularization burn, and as you can see, these drop tanks are just about to lose the last of their fuel. So when that goes, we'll drop those and finish off the circularization. It's going to happen any moment now. Alright, there they go. And there they go. Bye bye drop tanks. And slightly lighter, the craft carries on. As you can tell, we have very nearly circularized at this point. So I'm going to drop away now and I'll come back when that's happened. See you in a moment. we get into orbit. Just a, a little bit of correction here to make sure that we're completely circular. And then what we're going to do is we are going to split off some of these bits and pieces and start the missions popular, proper. Popular? Proper. Proper. That's the word. Proper. I'm a little bit disappointed. Uh, we used more fuel than I anticipated. I thought those drop tanks were going to be enough to get us in orbit. In fact, they were when I tested this out. And that won't click away. Why won't you click away? There we go. So there we are in a 500 uh, kilometer orbit, almost exact, close enough for me. What we can do now is, first of all, let's turn on SAS so we don't start uh, spinning around. And I want to detach a few bits and pieces. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decouple the reclamation vehicle so that can go off on its merry way we'll sort that one out in a minute and one thing I would like to do here is I want a satellite around Kerbin so before we go any further come on you click there we go let's decouple one of these we've got plenty of these little satellites so one won't go amiss let's just change to that one is that the one that's the one that's the wrong one that's the one. No, is that the one? That's the one. Yay. Too many things. OK, so let's first of all open up this antenna. Um, so extend. There we go. We now got a communication satellite. And Let's rename that. There we go, rename vessel. So this is the super happy, reliable corporation private satellite network one. And as a result, we now have a super happy satellite in orbit around Kerbin and that can relay our orbit orders and if I remember I will fire off another one before we uh, get out of orbit so there we go that's good let's change back to that's the one we want okay this is Burfred and this is the reclamation vehicle so what we want to do here is get this one. First of all, let's get rid of those. And let's activate the engine. And now what we want to do is get this thing off to Minmus. Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot around Minmus already. I don't know what I've just focused on there. So right, I'm not supposed to see that. So we're going to blink. No. Okay, we didn't see that. We didn't see that. We didn't see that. We don't know what it is. Okay. <sighs> Let's find the vessel that we actually do want to uh, target. Okay. Which I believe is one of these two. That's the Ghost Interceptor Escape Pod. That is the one we want. That is our target. Okay. That is the vessel that we want to come and, and uh, rescue the pilot of. So uh, 
without further ado, let's get ourselves an intercept course for Minbus. Is our target. So let's go and say hello, shall we? Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to use this grabbing tool at the front of this vessel to uh, grab hold of the escape pod and then we're going to go knock on the door and ask him to come join us. Not entirely who, who is certain who is in there at the moment, but whoever they are, they used to be, they, they're working for the Northern Coalition and they need to be questioned. So here we go. Going to speed things up a little bit now until we get really close and I'll slow down for the final grabbing action. Okay, we are now 50 meters away and we should be soon getting our first good look at the enemy vessel. Let's just make sure we're lined up with it exactly. There we go. Now, as we get close to it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow down as close to a halt as we can and then just drift forwards and hopefully just grab hold of it. So let's just get a better angle on this. Yeah, I think that's going to work. There we go. This is nicely lined up. Let's have a quick look at this escape pod as we move near it. Yeah, there's not much left of that craft, is there? And by the looks of it, they've run out of power. So whoever's in there is going to be in a pretty bad way. So let's hope he's still alive because we've got a couple of questions we want to ask him. All right, under 25 meters now. Getting very close. Just a couple of little nudges just to make sure we're lined up exactly 20 meters away. Doesn't Minmus look magnificent? We're nearly there. Yep, 
19. I just know this is really slow, but the last thing I want to do is knock this thing out of orbit when we get there. So let's take our time, make sure that we match exactly right. Yeah, yeah, Yep, that's lined up correctly. And hopefully, we will have a carbon we can interrogate when we get back to carbon. Nearly, nearly, almost. Is that going to hit? Yes, that's going to hit. Very, very nearly there. And it looks like we've netted ourselves a bob. Hello, Bob. Now, Bob, I think Burford's got something to say to you. Bob, it's time for you to face the music, get out of that ship, and come into the spare capsule. So I think Bob's going to accept the inevitable here now and uh, hop out of his capsule and come back to our spare capsule here where there's things like light, warmth, snacks, important things like that. So here we go. Oh dear. Looks like we've hit another one of those wonderful bugs. Okay, quick load that. All right, and here we are reloaded. We're coming up again. I'm going to speed this bit up so you don't have to see it a second time. But that was frustrating. But that's Kerbal Space Program for you, I'm afraid. And this is the reason why you hit F5 fairly often. And this time, of course, it doesn't work. Well, here we are. It took three, yes, three more goes, but I finally caught him. And before we do anything else, let's hit F5. In fact, let's hit it a second time, just to be safe. Okay, we will pass the message over. Bob, it's time for you to face the music, get out of that ship and come into the spare capsule. Fingers crossed, let's hope it doesn't mess up again this time. And it messes up against this time, so... Bob, sorry about this mate. But you're traveling home in the front capsule. Don't know what's wrong there, but there is something wrong there. What it probably is actually looking at this is there. Yes, yes, yes. Um, it looks like the armor plating is covering the door. So he's glitching as soon as he's coming out. But never mind. What we're going to do now is we are going to take him back to Kerbin. Because it's time for us to have a chat. Okay, so if we just go there, have a look at Maneuver, and that should get us heading back home soon enough. Yep, there we go. Just leave it like that, and I will circularize that orbit when we get out of that Mimesis um, plane of influence. So that's small, uh, small bone there. So I won't bother you, I won't bore you with uh, the details. We're going to go into hyperfast mode now.
Okay, we're grinding a little bit early, but it shouldn't really make a difference. Because all we really want to do at this point is break out of the influence of Limbless. There we go. In fact, that'll do nicely. Because once we're out of this, we'll slow our burn down, and then we'll just aim for a capture in Kerbin, Arrow Break, and use our parachute to get down to the ground. So, speed these up again. So here we are then, in orbit around Kerbin proper. So the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to go for a braking burn, which will bring our periaps down, sorry, our down into the, uh, the atmosphere of Kerbin. And then we can just relax a little bit, safe in the knowledge that um, we will uh, encounter the atmosphere, break that way, and land safely. There we go, that's a bit better. I thought we hadn't quite gone out the influence of Linus yet. So now... Let's just set that burn up quickly. There we go, let's look at our periaps. Oh, moving camera, not what we want. Yeah, this is not the most efficient way of blocking a, um, a burn back from the moon, but quite frankly, we have so much fuel, I actually want to burn some of that. Okay, nearly there. Just a little puff more. And we'll stop it around. There we go. Actually, a little bit more. There. And that will arrow break us nicely in the atmosphere. And we can take it from there. And away we go. Right, now. While we've been doing this, the, uh, the the other craft has been getting ready for its trip to Duna, so perhaps we should give that a bit of attention now and let this one carry on its merry way. Well, here it is, the moment we've been waiting for. Loaded up with snacks and kerbinauts, the mighty Duna Explorer is about to embark upon its maiden voyage. And here we go, firing up the engines. Well, there they go, these mighty nuclear engines. Each individually is not that powerful, only 60 newtons, but uh, uh, together they provide a massive 720, and that is more than enough to get us out to Juno. So we're going to leave them to their burn now. We'll come back later on when we get to a correction burn. And you know what? While we're at it, this seems like a good point to drop off another satellite. So, which one did we use last time? That one has got four on it, so it wasn't this one. So, bye-bye satellite. We'll come back and rename you later on. Oh, hold on. Let's just turn off the engines. Let's give that a little nudge out of the way. There we go. And then we'll carry on without it. Losing a little bit of our burn time. But quite frankly, I think we'll be alright. So there you go. Bye bye little satellite. We'll come back and look at you in a minute. He almost came along with us. <laughs> Alright, back to your normally scheduled burn. I've just noticed Kerbus there. My god, it's full of stars.
Do you know what? I think we've had enough of this. I'll see you at the end of the burn. Okay, here we are. Last few seconds of the burn. Last few meters per second for a little bit of thrust. There we go, that's good enough. Let's see how close we got. Nowhere near. Okay, well, that's not that unusual. Right, I'm going to do a few course corrections and I will see you guys. Actually, it took me only about 10 meters a second uh, course correction. And there we are with a very nice tight orbital insertion around Duna in a few hundred days time. So here we are. Our brave Kerbinauts flying away off to Duna. Who knows what they'll meet there. Who knows what adventures they'll see. What sights. What challenges. We'll find out next episode. Well, thank you very much, guys. This has been Kerbal Space Program PvP. I've been Simon Parsons. Thank you. And good night.